Hey guys, it's RJ. Thanks for tuning in to today's show today. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Airport Lounges and Lounge Buddy, which is another form of access that you can have to Airport Lounges. So if you like chilling out, maxing, and relaxing all cool, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and let's get to work. So first up, let's start with what are Airport Lounges. So maybe you're unfamiliar, or it's just been so long since you've been to an airport, uh, you might not remember what they're like. So Airport Lounges are spaces within an airport where you can kind of go and relax and kind of get away away from the noise of the main terminals. Generally, they have amenities like food, you know, shower sometimes, quiet places where you can take calls. Sometimes they have places your kids can play. Um, a lot of amenities and things like that. It's supposed to just be like a nicer spot than hanging out on the main terminal. So when we talk about airport lounges as a whole, there's a few different versions. So the one you're probably most familiar with is Priority Pass. So Priority Pass isn't necessarily like a lounge itself. Instead, Priority Pass is a network of airport lounges. You know, they come together and then you can buy a membership to Priority Pass and then you can have access to those lounges on your travels and there are different tiers of access. Now again, we're most familiar with Priority Pass through our premium travel credit cards, more specifically the Sapphire Reserve, the Amex Platinum. Both of those give you priority pass memberships that allow you to get into the lounge along with you and I think it's like two travel companions. It depends card to card what type of membership you have but generally speaking that's how most people get priority pass. Now of course you can also pay for priority pass. I'll put the prices on screen but again it's not really worth it in my opinion to pay for it. Again we all generally get it from those credit cards. Now on the other side of the aisle there are what I would call airline operated lounges. So Delta has the Delta Sky Club. United has United Club, American Airlines has Admirals Club. Um, they all kind of have something like that, their specific branding. So those lounges are typically for either people who are flying like first class or business class. Sometimes it's just a perk of the ticket that they get access to the lounge. Um, you can also get membership. You can also buy access to those lounges like day passes if you have certain credit cards. Like the Delta Platinum card, for example, allows you to spend like 40 bucks to get a day pass to the Delta Sky Club. And then you can also, some of these lounges, you can also just straight up buy a membership. I, I think you can buy like a Delta Sky Club membership is like 900 bucks a year. United Club Access I think is about 600 bucks a year. So you can see here those memberships end up being very pricey if you're not going to get access to it for flying first class or business class or what have you. Right, so there's two main ways. So right now we have two main ways to get access to lounges, either through credit cards, you can buy access, you can buy priority pass membership, you can buy day passes. All of those are kind of expensive. You can also see that's kind of where there's a gap at, right? Well, that's where Lounge Buddy enters into the equation. And what Lounge Buddy is, it's kind of a combination between Yelp, so reviews for lounges, and then on the other hand of it, it allows users to book lounges on the fly. So you don't have to be a member to Priority Pass, a credit card, what have you. You can just pull up your Lounge Buddy app, say you're landing in an airport, I want a lounge access, see what my options are, and I can buy instant tickets to that lounge without having all those prereqs that we just talked about. Lounge Buddy's been around for a while. I think American Express actually bought them out in 2019, so now American Express owns Lounge Buddy. And as a result, we do see some of the Amex cards get Lounge Buddy credits or passes as benefits. Most notably, the American Express Green Card has a few Lounge Buddy passes that you can use each card member year. I think there's a few others. One of the Hilton cards, I think, has Lounge Buddy passes as well. But right now, what we're going to do is jump over and take a look at Lounge Buddy, walk you through what they have, and how it works. And then on the other side of that, I'll kind of tell you who Lounge Buddy is for, why you should consider it, and when you should consider going to Lounge Buddy, or when you should consider going up to a credit card that covers Priority Pass. And and lounge access or when you should get an airline membership or basically we're going to cover all your options so without further ado let's jump over and take a look at lounge buddy all right guys so here we are on lounge buddy site so purchase airport lounge access worldwide starting at 25 dollars so when would I like to use in the lounge, regardless of whether you're traveling for business, lounge access can help you make the most of your airport experience. Arrive early, treat the fam, refresh after red eye, or get more for the money. Now, you do have to be careful with some of this. So this refresh after a red eye, right? Some lounges, to avoid overcrowding, what you have to do is show a same-day departing boarding pass to get in. So if 
if you're landing from a red eye and you don't have a connecting, then you might not be let in. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we go. And then again, these are some of the amenities that lounges offer. Now again, you have to be careful because these are not guaranteed at every single lounge. Uh, this is definitely going to be a by lounge basis. So you just have to double check. And of course, if you're staying in the lounge, you can do it for the gram as the kids say. All right, now I'm just gonna do my home airport because I know it pretty well. Uh, and again, remember, still to this day, some lounges are actually closed, you know, because we're still not traveling as much, though things are starting to open. So our, our access could be a little bit limited here, but let's take a look. So we can see Detroit Metro here. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, Detroit Metro has two main terminals. You've got like McNamara, which is everything Delta, as we can see here by all these Delta Sky Clubs. And you have North Terminal, which is like everything that's not Delta. So if you look at all lounges, we have eight. So it looks like book with lounge, but you could book the Lustanza Business Lounge in the North Terminal. terminal. And then the rest of these lounges here, all in McNamara, uh, you could not actually book. Well, there's some in North Terminal as well. Um, so these may have been bookable, like this one's closed, I don't know. Um, so, But for right now, we only have one option. So let's take a look. All right, so right off the bat here, I like the layout. I mean, they're giving you some nice pictures of the lounge here as you can kind of click through and see some of the spaces. Now you come down here, you know, there's some kind of, you know, the, the quick media blurb about it. Here are the amenities that we talked about so you can see what you get and then you can see like we said not every amenity is available so you're just gonna have to double check that if you're looking for something special and again they've got some important info about the lounge that interestingly enough I didn't like this part so if your priority pass diners club and lounge club card tunnels do not have access to the lounge between 1 and 4 p.m. daily. So I would assume this means if you're buying with a lounge buddy pass, you would still get in. Now it is nice to see user reviews, right? So we can see we've got 21 reviews. Um, not super current, but again, they've been closed for quite some time now. So um, you can kind of see what you're getting into. We have a few needs improvement here. So you can just kind of read here before you go ahead and pull the trigger. Now scrolling back up, we can see you're talking about $39 per travel you can select your time and how many travelers you wanted so if you wanted two travelers uh, it's not actually going to refresh there but let's just see the packages so again um, acquired lounge buddy has been acquired by American Express as a result lounge bookings are exclusively available on an American Express card so you cannot book this if you do not have an American Express card that is interesting so if you select that um, it gives you your breakdown we're not actually going to pay but you can see here it's already defaulted that you can only use an American Express card and it will know that because the Visa MasterCard and American Express all start with their own different numbers uh, respectively so they would actually figure that out let's compare that to priority pass while we're here so this is kind of what we talked about the priority pass uh, levels of priority pass um, so here's their site you can see their landing page at least so our lounges so you can see the Priority Pass network's pretty big. It's a lot bigger globally than it is over in um, the States. But we'll do the same airport here. Please select a lounge on the left. So this time we have two. So we have the Lustanza Business Lounge again. Um, so this isn't nearly as good um, as the Lounge Buddy layout, quite honestly. Um, they do tell you some amenities and stuff, but that's it. You don't get any pictures. You just get this one so you know what to look for, uh, but that's it. Uh, with Priority Pass, again, you do have access to one more lounge, so if you're in McNamara Terminal, you can get access. But again, no pictures, um, some conditions here, some amenities. I love that they list air conditioning. Like, why would it not have air conditioning? The Priority Pass layout, definitely not as good compared to uh, the, the Lounge Buddy version. Okay, so one more thing to look at here. This is from Upgraded Points. Since we're using the Lustanza Lounge as an example, let's just take a look at lounge eligibility. So with these lounges, you're eligible to access can be a bit confusing, so they break it down for you on a table. And really what I wanted to see if there was a way to get in just like walking up and paying, but it doesn't seem that there is. So we're talking about the business lounge over here. So, you know, they have a t three tiers of lounges. Um, so this looks like the business one is probably their lowest tier. Um, so you can see there's not actually a way to actually walk up and just buy admission in. So apparently if you did not have any of these statuses, you hadn't sprung for, you know, business 
business or first class, then Lounge Buddy could be your best alternative to getting into the lounge if you were interested to do so. so now, overall, I do think Lounge Buddy again serves a purpose, right? This is someone who's you know traveling maybe one, two times a year, if that, and just you know, hey, I want to have an access to a lounge. Maybe I want to make it seem more of a luxurious experience because I don't travel often. And the other use case for this is someone who's traveling. You don't ordinarily don't care about lounges at all, but let's say you get stuck in a layover. Like, for example, one time I remember I had an 8 a.m. flight from Detroit to D.C., and for whatever reason, the plane was overbooked. So there was like a chance at that moment, like, hey, we're going to have to bump you to the next flight, and the next flight is until like 4 p.m. So what are you really going to do in the airport for eight hours, right? That's a long time to sit on a terminal. You also need to think about lunch. So if you were that person, at that point in time, getting a lounge or getting a ticket to a lounge could make a lot of sense. So those are the two primary use cases I see for Lounge Buddy. Now, overall, it is somewhat limiting because you have to have an American Express card to book the lounge, which I think was interesting that they would block Lounge Buddy from anyone else who doesn't have an Amex card, but also not really promote Lounge Buddy that much on the Amex site. So that's an interesting choice to do there. But again, you can get no annual fee Amex cards that are actually quite valuable. So if you're interested, um, that's not a huge roadblock that obviously when they put in place on purpose. Now, the other thing about the Lounge Buddy network that I did notice when we were looking at it, and again, we just used DTW, for example, but out of eight lounges in Detroit Metro, you only could book one through Lounge Buddy. So there's a whole nother terminal on the other side. And if you're unfamiliar with DTW, there's not actually a good way to go from one terminal to another. I know most airports have it. You can actually walk or take a you know one of those trains or what have you. I would for this specific airport, again, small use case, there's not actually a good way to do that. So the network can be somewhat limiting. So if you're going to rely on Lounge Buddy, I would just kind of check your routes ahead of time and make sure you can actually get coverage. But again, Lounge Buddy is more something to keep in your back pocket should you need it. So that brings me to the last point of this. It's really hard to knock Lounge Buddy because, again, you can book tickets for somewhat of a discount over what it would cost you to buy a day pass at one of these lounges. However, if you're going to start using lounges more and more and more, right? Like, let's just say you have the Amex green card and you get past the three or four credits that they give you at that point, then I would probably start considering looking at one of those premium tier credit cards to cover your lounge access. Access. Again, you can either go Sapphire Reserve, Amex Platinum. There are some cheaper options that have priority pass as well. Or if you're very loyal to a certain airline, let's just say you fly United a lot, then it might make more sense to just go ahead and pull the trigger on the United Infinite card for $525 annual fee, I think. It's going to throw you United Club access, and then you're covered. So for me, again, Lounge Buddy was designed for a specific purpose, and I think it does deliver on that purpose pretty well. It's something to keep in your back pocket when you're traveling. You just need quick access to an airport lounge. That being said, if you have used Lounge Buddy before, definitely let us know your thoughts down below. Does it come in handy on your travels? Have you been able to get access to a large amount of lounges on the fly? Love to get some more insights for users who have actually had experience with this. But anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you find it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel, posting content just like this about three to four times per week. But anyways, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.